Hello, everybody. Today, we're going to do a deep dive into the election for governor of New Hampshire. This is an open seat, and it's expected to be the most competitive election for governor now that North Carolina has pretty much fallen off the map. So Democrats looking for a flip here, Republicans looking to hold it. So we'll start here with some background information on Ballotpedia. So again, this is an open seat as Governor Chris Sununu, or Sununu as I like to say, has decided to not run for term number four. And given his last win was very comfortable, this time it's expected to be a big battle. So the nominee for the Republicans is Kelly Ayotte. And Ayotte previously served one term in the U.S. Senate from 2011 to 17. She was barely defeated in her re-election bid in 2016. Prior to that, she served as the Attorney General and her background is in law. Her opponent on the Democratic side is Joyce Craig. Craig served four years as the Mayor of Manchester. Prior to that, her background is in advertising. So let's see how they did in their primaries. Well, Joyce Craig had a competitive primary. Her main challenger was Cindy Warman who was considered more progressive. Craig considered more establishment. In the end, Craig came out on top with 49% of the vote to Warmington's 41. For Kelly Ayotte, she only had a marginally competitive primary. She pulled in a better than 2 to 1 ratio over Chuck Morse, who was considered a more conservative challenger. So Ayotte being considered more establishment and more moderate, she got the endorsement of Governor Sununu and she got 66% of the vote. Now, if you want to compare raw primary vote totals for each party, Democrats over 84,000, Republicans under 87,000. I don't put a lot of weight on those numbers, but if you do, Republicans with the slightest edge. And this state also had a very late primary. That was on September 10th. So it's going to be less than two months from the primary to election day. So not as much time as some other states for these two to get their campaigns going. So if you're not a fan of five or six months of campaigning in other states, the Granite State might be for you. In addition to these two major party candidates, there is also a libertarian candidate on the ballot. And this is the live free or die state. Independents or libertarians might pull in a little bit more than they would in some other places. Now let's go down here and see how this race is rated. Well, as of October 22nd, all three of the prediction sites, Cook, Inside Elections, and Larry Sabato, they rate this as a toss-up. Since I don't do toss-ups, my most recent rating at the beginning of the month was Tilt Republican. Uh, my thinking is, even though this state is much bluer on a federal level, it's going to be President, Senate, and the House. Republicans have had success here in this state. Governor Sununu's first win was relatively narrow back in 2016, but since then he's been popular, so there's not been much of a contest. Ayat has high name ID. She's won statewide in the past. If she can ride any of those Sununu coattails, that should be enough to at least give her a narrow win. Now, she was defeated in her re-election bid, so that's definitely a blemish on her record. But all she has to do is really say she wants to continue what the current governor is doing. Of course, her weakest issue is likely to be abortion. Now, as for Joyce Craig, she's got a track record as being mayor. That's either going to be a success or a failure, depending on how you look at it. Now, since Craig has left office, they have gone on to technically elect a Republican to replace her. So if that's a reflection on her record, that's also not going to be a great look. I think the best thing for Craig to do is to say that Sununu has done some good things as governor, but he's also done some bad things. Let's go for a change in the governor's mansion. I don't think that messaging is too harsh. A lot of times it tends to work. This is definitely a small state. It's going to be much easier to campaign in. So she can just tap into enough voters that are going to come out and vote for Harris at the top of the ticket for president. If she could have minimal crossover votes, she could be the next governor. So as you can see, we've got some endorsements here, and then we've got the campaign financing. Here, Kelly Ayotte has the decisive advantage. Craig's pulled in some, but Ayotte does have better ties to the establishment, which means more funding. And in a smaller race in a closer state, I think the funding can only go so far. Now, let's take a quick glance at some of these counties and see which way they've moved on a presidential level. So the shading here does not indicate the margins. This just tells you how often they voted for the Democrat or the Republican in the past three presidential elections. And there's actually only one county that voted for the Republican in the past three. It's going to be Belknap County. And last time Trump did win it by over 10. That is clearly a reduced margin from what it was in 2016, but it is wider than it was in 2012. Now the most populous county is going to be Hillsborough, and that does have the city of Manchester where Joyce Craig was mayor. So you'd think unless they hate her here, she's going to get some decent support. And this county did vote for Joe Biden last time by seven points. That's pretty close to what it was statewide. Next door in Rockingham County. This one also has a decent chunk of population, but it did vote for Biden last time by a couple of points after Trump carried it in 16 by more than five. So that's a pretty good blue shift there in just four years. And that's with a lot less third party vote in 20 compared to 16. So we can't go over every county, but the last one we'll take a glance at here is Grafton. This is the bluest county in the state and it did get even bluer between 16 and 20. Here Biden last time almost hitting 25 points. So that's going to be a place that Craig is looking to run up her margins. Now for some comparison, we can take a glance at what Chris Sununu did in his last win for governor in 20. 
point too. Given he won by more than 15 points, this isn't really going to be all that beneficial. Most of this state is red, including in Manchester itself where he won by 13 points. If Kelly Ayak got anywhere near these numbers, she would easily be the next governor. You'd like to think that Joyce Craig would at least be able to do a lot better than a 13 point loss here. Now we can also go back to 2016 and see what Kelly Ayotte did when she was defeated in her re-election bid for Senate. So she lost only by about a thousand votes. So this could be similar to how it might look for governor. So here in Manchester, Ayotte lost it by about six and a half. And in the capital of Concord, Ayotte lost it here by 23 points. So there is some polarization here. And once you add everything up, it almost looks like it's a 50-50 state. So let's take a glance at their official campaign websites. So here it is for Kelly Ayotte. If you have no idea who she is, you can find that out right here. Also where she stands on the issues, what she's up to, or if you want to donate to her campaign. And we've also got it here for Joyce Craig. Here you can find out more about her backstory, her stances on the issues, her endorsements, or support her campaign. So what about any debates? Well, we had a forum, which is the closest thing we're going to get to a debate. I did watch it. It was pretty standard. The candidates got pressed on a couple of their potential weaknesses. For Ayat, that's going to be abortion and her support of Donald Trump. For Craig, that's going to be her ties to Massachusetts Governor Maura Healey. There's going to be a bunch of other issues out there, housing, immigration, etc. Now let's take a look at the current polling. Now there's not that many at the current moment. I'm expecting to see a few more here in the final week and a half. But in the aggregate, Kelly Ayotte is ahead by a narrow 1%. Is that about 4 46 and a half, Joyce Craig at 45 and a half. The most recent poll from UMass Lowell slash YouGov has Kelly Ayotte at only 42 and Joyce Craig at 41. A big 14% undecided. So with that many undecideds, this race is totally up for grabs. Now for comparison, we could see how accurate the polls were in the last election for governor in 2022. That one had Sununu ahead by 16.7. He was at about 56. Tom Sherman at about 39. And as you can see, there's a lot more polls here in the final couple of weeks. And this race wasn't even really that competitive. But for the most part, I think the polls were pretty close. Once you even everything out, Sununu got 57, Sherman got 41 and a half. Given it wasn't super competitive, being off by maybe a point or two, I don't think is that big of a deal. So some decent polling here last time. Finally, we can get on Poly Market and see where people are putting their money. Right now, it's very close. The Republican candidate, Kelly Ayotte, has a 53% chance, and Joyce Craig, the Democrat, is at 46. It's a total coin flip, but maybe there's a slight tilt toward Kelly Ayotte. So what's the conclusion here for New Hampshire? governor. Well, it's a moderately blue state at a federal level, but Republicans have controlled state government. So that might be a good thing for Kelly Ayotte if Sununu is popular and they want to continue that direction. If they're looking for a change or if there's a big surge of support for Kamala Harris for president, then Joyce Craig could easily end up winning this seat. But I don't think either of these candidates wants to align themselves too closely with Trump or Harris. Ayotte is just trying to not rock the boat. She's trying to say that Joyce Craig wants to turn New Hampshire into Massachusetts. Craig is looking to take things in just a little bit different direction and provide some balance to state government. It could go either way. We just saw there's a lot of undecideds. We'll see if one of these two can break out a lead in the final week. But for right now, it's very close, and this is going to be the marquee race for governor in this upcoming election. So let me know in the comments, what do you think about this race for governor? Does Kelly Ayotte have a small advantage? Or do you think Joyce Craig is banking on change and she could pull out a win? Which way are the late breakers going to go? Let me know down below on your way out. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Join if you'd like to help support the channel. Hit the bell for notifications. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.